Greetings. Thank God for allowing us all to be here today. Thank God for this being our, our youth Sunday. Thank God for him keeping us all to be present in the house of God once again. Thank God for uh, the opening song coming from our our old little flock. Uh, you know, we're not all in that age yet or that stage, but thank God for them still being in the way. You know? Yeah. So we want to make sure that we do keep uh, keep our older saints or our saints keep everyone in prayer, you know, prayer, you know, yeah. because we all need it. Yeah. But thank God for you guys opening us up with that yeah. song. Yeah. We're gonna have a scripture reading coming from uh, Habakkuk, the second chapter. That's one of the brothers come read this for us. Um, the theme for this this youth Sunday is vision for my life. All right, what is your vision? What is your vision for your life? So we're gonna start with our opening. Scripture, which will be coming from Habakkuk, the second chapter, verses 1 through 5. That's an all stand. Let me ask you all to stand for Scripture here this morning. Scripture will be coming from Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. I will stand upon my watch. And set me upon the tower, and will watch to and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come; it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgressed, transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell, and as in death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth upon him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that reading. Amen. And again, we want to think about that on today. What you know? What is the vision? Um, so, Brother Brian, we're going to do a, a quick little assignment. Um, those who don't have paper, um, we're going to hand it off to all the youth first. So, all the youth, and that's anybody that's uh, a youth or young adult, you can raise your hand if you want one. Um, you all the saints, you can do this yourself. Um, but what we're going to look at first is uh, I, there is the word vision. There's an acronym that I have for the word vision. Um, the first thing that you're going to write on your paper is um, the letter V. All right, so on your paper, you're going to write the letter V. And next, the V stands for value. All right. Again, we're talking about vision. Vision for my life. So what is the vision for my life? So the first letter is V. V stands for value. And what you're going to write to the next to that is a question. All right, what do I value? All right, what do I value? Come on now, I know some of y'all ain't been in school in a while. Come on. <laughs> but again, we're going to do this. We're going to do this quick little activity. Um, and you don't have to give all the answers now. It's, it's nothing that needs to be turned in, but it's just something for you to think about. Mm -hmm. Something for you to, you know, while you're going along your day, understand and make sure that your, your vision is also in alignment with God's will and his vision for your life. So the first thing you're going to write is the letter B, and next to it you're going to put the word value. Then the question is, what do I value? All right. Mm -hmm. Next is I. You're going to put the letter I. And I stands for interest. What am I interested in? Mm -hmm. All right, after, again, the letter I, what am I, what am I interested in? All right, the next is S. S stands for service. What type of service do I want to be a part of? All right, and then when we look at the word service, that could be something that you're doing to help in the community or whatever. So again, service could be the mentorship or whatever you want it to be, all right? 
So S stands for service. What type of service do I want to be a part of? Again, we have another I. The next I stands for investment. What investments do I want? What investments do I want? Then the next letter is O. O stands for opportunities. Opportunities. What opportunities are available to me? What opportunities are available to me? So again, we're, we're looking at vision. What is the vision for my life? All right. V stands for value. I stands for interest. S stands for service. I stands for investments. Um, o stands for opportunity. All right. And opportunity is what opportunities do I have available to me? And the last letter is N. N stands for need. Why does the world need this? Why does the world need this? Amen. Again, we're talking about what is the vision for my life? So when when I had was reading the book of Habakkuk and it came into Habakkuk's second chapter, it talks about how it says, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that read it. And when you think about the word run, run is a form of action, right? Run is something that you do. That's a form of action that you must take. So a lot of, so a lot of us, um, and as youth, and I'm, I'm here to encourage the youth today, um, a lot of us have things that we are interested in. You know, the, the world is going to pull us in many directions. It's going to pull you sometimes away from church. It's going to pull you to be interested in things that may not be pleasing in the sight of God. But you want to make sure that your vision that you have in mind for your life is aligned with the vision and the will of God. Because a lot of times we may do things that may be pleasing to what? The flesh. It may be pleasing not to our spiritual life, but it's pleasing to our flesh because we see everybody, everyone else doing it. So we must make sure that the vision that we have for our life is in alignment with God's will. A lot of times we find people, we're, we're doing things, we're doing things and we're, we're praying and we're desiring things. But those things that we are praying and desiring may not be in alignment with what God wants for us. So, again, the vision for my life. What is your vision? So when you talk about what do I value? Right. All of us have different things that we value, but we want to make sure that the things that we're valuing in our life are things that God holds true as value. All right. We, you know, your job isn't going to save you. Right. So what should we all value? Your soul. Your soul right. Amen. So if in your vision in your life, if your soul is not something that is in the vision or the will of God that you're valuing, then you're probably going the wrong direction. All right. Then you got to look at interest. What am I interested in? I know a lot of us have interests outside of church being used in, in the church. You know, I thank God for myself, my nephew, my brothers. We all do different things. But thank God for allowing us to have an interest to at least want to come to church. Amen. Because there are people who don't want to come. But, but even with that interest, we must, when something is interesting to you, that means it's drawing your attention. So we as saints have to ask ourselves, are we making church interesting enough for people that are young to want to come? Right. Because if we're not doing things as saints to encourage the, the youth to want to come to church mm -hmm. and to be a part of church, then the world is going to have a stronger pull on us. Mm -hmm. All right. So, again, what are you interested in? Are, you, are the things that you're interested in taken away from your prayer life? Is it taken away from your, your ability and your desire to seek God and seek after him? Then next is service. All right. What type of service do I want to be a part of? I know for me, uh, one of the things that I put down was uh, mentorship and youth outreach to inspire kids to do something positive. Um, this past week in Tallahassee alone, we probably had close to 10 shootings or more mm -hmm. and close to about four or five people lose their lives. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus. you know, my service and our service, we should be a light to our community. We should yeah. be a light. So. 
you got to think about it. In the darkest room, the smallest candle will still shine bright. Yeah. So you may think right now that you're just, don't just look at you coming to church as something that's, that's repetitive. Be able to get something out of it so that when you do leave these four walls, that you can be a light, even in your classroom and to your, you know, you all, we already look different because of sometimes how we dress. And I know that's easier to say for the, the young ladies because most of the, the women, you guys have to, you wearing the skirts and things. But I know for myself, I have to make sure that my actions, because again, it says that he may run that readeth it. I have to make sure that my actions that I'm living, even though I don't have to wear a certain attire, I look like I'm not a part of the world. You know, we must be able to separate clean versus unclean. And that's in everything that we do. So what type of service are you going to be a part of? How are you going to be able to, to reach and draw other people to be interested in coming in the church? Is that in your vision? Or are you just here just because you think, oh, I, I'm going to be saved, but I don't have no responsibility to help no one else out? Oh, On a day-to-day -day basis, we come in contact with millions of people, thousands of people, right? Whether that be via social media. You can post something today, and it can be read by thousands of people. Yeah. Right. So you can't say that you don't have opportunity to inspire, to help other people to be drawn to Christ. Is that part of your vision? Yeah. All right. Next, you have investment. How invested are you in the temple? How invested are you in to come into church and, and praying? How, how invested? You know, when we all how many of us have retirement funds or retirement accounts? Right. Raise your hand. You know, you got money yeah. that you're putting away yeah. so that when you retire, you be able, you 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 looking forward to cashing out on that retirement fund. Amen. You some some of you all as youth, we may not have that yet, but you need to be invested as young people into your spiritual in your, in your spiritual life. Because I'm telling you, when you get older, it becomes harder because you have more things that are going to pull you away from church. That's going to pull you away from praying. So I know that uh, our minister, Minister Corey, he gave us the brothers an assignment. And he told us, hey, we need to pray every three hours. So that's three, six, nine, twelve, you know, however many times. And sometimes I found myself missing that time. But what I said was like, you know what? Even though it's not three o'clock, I'm going to still go down in prayer. Because I want to be invested in my spiritual life. Yeah, I want to yeah. be invested into, into, you know, the same way we, we save up for big things. We got to understand that, saints, one, one day this, this earth, this world is going to pass away. Yeah. You know, so... I was thinking about this other day. I know that sometimes we see the rainbow. What does the rainbow represent? That is going to be what? Come on, y'all. We mumbling. What we mumbling? Fire, right? It's going to be fire. The, the earth is going to burn. And I, I thought about this analogy. It's a covenant, right? Yeah. So I thought about this. And I seen this. I'm, I was a science teacher. So the earth compared to the sun is as if you got one grain of sand. That's how small the earth is compared to the sun. And I think about it, and I was thinking, like, you know, yes, we have the rainbow as a covenant sign. And I know a lot of times we think about how hot it is. But what if the, the sun itself was hell? What if we're seeing that covenant or that sign every day of how hot it's going to be when we burn and when those that are not saved are burning? Because, you know, you hear that expression. Some people say it's hot as, you know, y'all right. know it. Right. Y'all hear it. Right. right. But think about it. What if we're seeing what Jesus, hell is Jesus, every day? Jesus. But people Lord are not turning Jesus. to Christ. Lord so, Jesus. again, am I invested in my spiritual life? Am, am I seeing what God wants me to do? Am I walking according to his will? Then the next one is opportunities. What opportunities are available to us? God, God grace is renewed when? So that is an opportunity. Every day you wake up, you have an opportunity to, to make sure that your life is going according to the vision and the will of God. If it's not doing, if you're not praying every day, or if you're not seeking after His His kingdom every day, then that opportunity is going to one one day fall away. One day it's going to be a time where you can't pray. God God is going to close. He's going to shut the door, and He's not going to allow no one else to be saved. So while you have that opportunity, while you can have that breath in your body, use that opportunity to make sure that again your vision. What do I want for my life? Because at the end of the day, we all desire things naturally. You know, I know that for myself personally, I desire, I put what I desire on here naturally. I said, listen, I want, I'm in a full bedroom house, three bathrooms, a den, a, a billiards table, a, a, a game system room, a gym. Like, that is my vision. That is my vision for my life. But I have to make sure that what am I visioning also 
I have to understand that that's going to pass away. That's all vain. Yeah. All right. So I can't get so caught up into vain and material things that I'm not considering my soul. All right. Then the last one is what? Need. What do we all need? The Holy Ghost. We all need God's spirit to dwell within us. We all need his spirit to dwell within us so that, so that we can be saved. All right. Because, again, we all have things that we need. You know, we all need to eat. We all need to do different things. But again, you want to make sure God's spirit is within you because we need his spirit to keep us. Right now, we see that the spirit of Satan, he rules. He has dominion over what? Over the earth. He has dominion in our flesh. That's, that's why when he was cast down here, he has he can he even presented himself to God. Jesus, he gave him he sent him up on a high mountain. And he showed him I can give you all of this. Sometimes the things that we see in this world, the vision that we think of, it may not be what God wants us to have. It may be something that the devil may be presenting to you that may seem like, Lord, this is for my good, but it may not be. So we have to be considerate of making sure that the things that we need are in alignment with God's will. All right. Amen. 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 So thank God for that. That was just, again, the little. Um, so again, man. Even though we did it from a spiritual standpoint, you still want to make sure while you're living this natural life that your will and those things that you desire, those visions that you have for your life, as young people, write them down. If you want to go to school, if you want to graduate, if you want to have this type of job, if you want to have this type of outcome in your life, you have to make sure you're reading it every day. The same way we read the word, you have to make sure that your vision for your life is in alignment with God's will. Amen? Amen. So we're going to have...